Today, we're answering questions about the role of glycine, an amino acid, in the maintenance and operation of the brain, how that might affect your sleep, and then also how glycine could be involved in longevity, of all things. Hey, I'm Dr. A, and we answer questions about health care items, chronic complex illness, and other health care topics on this channel. So let's get into it. The first thing is amino acids are the basic building blocks of proteins. So if you've seen a protein, it's lots and lots of amino acids strung together in peptides. Then peptides are strung together into bigger chunks, which are going to be proteins. The Amino acid family comes obviously from the food we eat, generally from proteins that we eat. Of course, we break them down. And so glycine is one of many that we use in the body. So let's start with the brain part. So the first thing is in your brain, and this is not uncommon in the way that the neurotransmission, the brain chemistry balance works, you have a particular operator, for example, which might be an amino acid or maybe a neurotransmitter or both. And in the case of glycine, Glycine, this is one of the sort of hallmark types of brain chemistry blueprints. Many times you will have one substance that is both inhibitory and excitatory, but to different degrees. It's almost like there's this balance going on. So if I put a lot of glycine into the brain, it's going to be mostly inhibitory, and it's just going to kind of aggravate the excitatory system a little bit to kind of keep you a little awake. Now, one of the things in general, with most of the population is the bulk of glycine action goes into the inhibitory calming side of the brain. And so for most people, they will take glycine, say around dinner time and bedtime, and it will help them calm down. Or we see people taking glycine when they are having sore or tight muscles, things like that. Magnesium and glycine work really well together. And in fact, there are supplements that are called like magnesium glycinate. That is literally magnesium and glycine seen hooked together. So you're getting both and kind of the best of both worlds. So normally in the nervous system, glycine is calming and it's calming to the brain. It can help you with sleep and calming the nervous system down, can help you to relax tight muscles, all of those good things. Remember I said it also goes over the excitatory side and has a little effect. In a minority of people, if they take glycine and they feel that they get agitated by it or they're awake from it, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It just means genetically, instead of using most of the glycine for the calming part of the ledger, they're using some calming and a lot of excitatory part. So whenever we recommend somebody takes glycine, say for help with sleep or something like that, we always do a little test dose and say, try it one or two times. And if you feel calm from it, you can adjust the dose. If it feels like it made you wake up or agitated or like you were caffeinated or something, it's just not the right thing for you. Another interesting thing in the supplement world with glycine is sometimes glycine itself may be a little agitating to this minority of brain chemistry or brain genotypes, but magnesium glycinate, where you're putting the magnesium and the glycine together, is not aggravating. And that's because of the way that the two things are going to work on the receptors in the nervous system. So just because you reacted to glycine in an excitatory way doesn't always mean you're going to react that way to say something like magnesium glycinate. So the next part of glycine is this big picture topic of longevity. Now, longevity gets thrown around a lot. You see this talked about like, you know, with biohacking and, you know, health maintenance and health improvement and these sort of big nebulous terms. Now, technically longevity means, of course, living longer. And so specifically, because this was another piece of the questions that we got, I wanted to address how glycine may affect the way that your body operates in a longevity sense. Certainly, if glycine for for most people is helpful in calming the nervous system and helping you sleep, adequate sleep is very, very important, right? So in an indirect way, that is one way that glycine is helpful to you. But what would be some other ways that don't have to do necessarily with the nervous system that glycine could help with longevity? Well, there's a number of possibilities here, and all of these are known activities of glycine. The first thing is that your primary major human body synthesized 
best antioxidant is called glutathione, and glutathione has three amino acids in it, one of which is glycine. So if we don't have enough glycine, we might actually slow our glutathione formation down, and we're going to have a decrease in the amount of glutathione available for oxidative reductive mechanisms or as an antioxidant. Well, the more net positive oxidation you have in your body, the more damage it has. So that could be cell membrane damage, that could be mitochondrial damage, that could be damaged tissues or organs, etc. So through glycine's help in forming glutathione, that's one way it could feed into longevity. Another thing that is very important that glycine does that keeps us level every day, and these things thankfully are going on automatically in our body biochemically and we don't even think about them, but one of the things that's very important that glycine does is it involves itself in phase two detoxification. Now, if there's a phase two, there must have been a phase one and there might be a phase three and that's true. We sort of divide up detoxification into phase one, two, and three. Glycine is specifically involved in phase two in the, what we call the conjugation pathway. So it's sort of like taking the trash out. So if you think about it, you can either get a toxin through phase one that's sort of set up, ready to go out the body, or you get a toxin directly into phase two. They both go into phase two. There are conjugation pathways that basically what we call put an anchor on the toxin so that you urinate it out or it goes out in your feces. It leaves your body. Glycine is a very big operator in phase two detoxification in helping to take the trash out essentially. Why is this important for longevity? Well, if you let phase one and phase two back up over time, remember our body's always constantly dealing with inflammatory things, toxic things, etc. It's just part of being alive. If you back the system up, you're going to have more and more toxins, toxicants in the body that will be harder for your cells to work normally it's sort of like lowering your glutathione only it's directly attacking it with toxins that are having a hard time leaving the body and then another way certainly not all the ways but another way that glycine would interact with longevity is through a manipulation so positive manipulation of your immune system where we have a inflammatory part of our immunity which helps us attacking things and stuff like that then we have an anti-inflammatory portion of the immune system, which helps to kind of calm down the attack side. And in the middle of that balance is called immunomodulation. Well, if immunomodulation is going on, then when I need immune response to be inflammatory, I have it. But then when I need immune response to calm down, it goes back down. Things that would involve lack of immunomodulation might include things such as autoimmunity can have a piece of it that's lack of immunomodulation, other things like that, imbalances. Well, it turns out, among many other chemicals in your body, glycine is involved heavily in immunomodulatory activity, and it helps to modulate the chemicals that either tell the system to be more inflammatory or to calm down their inflammation. And so glycine sort of helps in the middle with the crosstalk. So again, we need to be inflammatory when we need to go trigger immune response, but we don't want to be inflammatory all the time. So glycine helps with that crosstalk. And the better we modulate our immune function, generally the healthier our cells are and the longer we might even live. But certainly we'll have healthier cells and have a healthier body. So it's a piece of that puzzle as well. All right. I'm Dr. A. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Please do like, share, and subscribe. And we love answering your questions on here. I'll be back for the next video.